I'm Carlos Luna, content producer here at Roll20, and this is Learn How, Play Now. Today, we're taking a look at Monster of the Week. Now, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to get your game up and running as quickly as possible. We'll go over creating characters and what the Game Master will need to know to run the game. You can jump to different timestamps in this video for more specific information. I'll leave that info in the description below. Now, thematically, Monster of the Week is kind of like an episode of your favorite Supernatural TV show. Your players can become the chosen one like Buffy, or maybe they're a family of hunters like Supernatural. Maybe they're a monster who hunts monsters like The Witcher. It's gritty, it's dark, it's campy, it's role-playing, and I absolutely love this game. Monster of the Week is played with normal D6s. The players are called hunters, and they work together as a team to take on whatever the keeper throws at them. Now, the Game Master is the Keeper, and they make the monsters, the mysteries, and they guide the hunters through the adventure. If you're new to role-playing games, don't worry. You don't have to have all the answers. As Keeper, you'll ask the players questions and build off their answers. You're hosting the mystery, you're not the sole driver of it. Rather than fretting about whether the team is discovering the right solution to your mystery, focus on making the world seem real. Play to see what happens. Make the hunter's lives dangerous and scary. Just make it real. Concept. Now, before players build their hunter character, have them talk about a team concept they might want to play. Like a family of hunters on a cross-country road trip that keep getting into trouble. Or maybe they're a team from a secret government agency sent to find and uncover unexplained phenomenon. Having a concept in mind will help them choose what type of hunter they may want to play and their relationship to each other which that'll make gameplay a lot easier if they know each other. Now for an even quicker start to this game, check out the free Evil Hat module, Dream Away the Time on Roll20. It comes with pre-generated characters that are meant to work well on a team, and it also has a quick start handout explaining the basic rules of the game, sort of like what I'm doing. I'll leave that link in the description below. Okay, let's build the hunters. Choosing a playbook. Now each player chooses a hunter playbook. The name gives you a good idea of what's inside, each playbook will be different, but explain the hunter's moves, rating, and gear. Be sure to remind them to keep the team concept in mind as they're deciding. Names and looks. Have players pick a name and look, like hairstyle, outfit, temperament. Maybe they're a woman in their mid-30s with focused eyes, wearing neat clothes, and a briefcase. Ratings. Next, your players are going to choose their hunter's ratings based on five options. Now, each of these options have strengths and weaknesses. These ratings are what are added to the die rolls throughout the game, so have your players keep that in mind. Moves. Now, each playbook has a set of their own specific moves. Like, our focused eye hunter, for example, can connect the dots, which allows them to ask the keeper questions right at the start of the adventure that only they would be able to figure out. That's super useful. Gear. Everyone chooses gear. Some hunters depend greatly on gear, so keep that in mind. If you have a certain player that might not want to keep track of inventory that way, let them know. Introductions. Have your players go around the table describing their hunter to each other. And after descriptions are shared, go around again and each hunter creates a history between themselves and each other hunter. Maybe one is an estranged sibling and the other is a co-worker they have a crush on since day one. The playbook will give each player a list of prompts to choose from, so don't worry if you're not immediately inspired with ideas for these connections. By the end of introductions, each hunter should have created two pieces of history with each other hunter, one they choose and one that was chosen for them. Example of play. Now that your players have their hunters created, let's see how a scene might play out. I'll explain mechanics along the way. For example, your characters are grabbing a drink at a bar. They suspect the owner has a secret office in which they might find some clues. Now, your players may go about finding the secret office in a variety of ways. One of your players may describe subtly moving behind the bar while the owner is in the back, looking for any secret buttons or levers. You, the keeper, recognize that your player is making the move investigate a mystery. Now, most moves involve rolling dice. The description of the move will tell you one way or the other, though. Investigate a mystery says roll plus sharp. That means the hunter making the move rolls 2d6 and adds their sharp rating. If you're playing on roll 20, clicking on the dice next to the move rolls and does all the math for you, though. Now, the total of the roll was an 8. That means it was a partial success. Each move has a range of success. 
most ranges are 10 plus is a great success, seven to nine success with possible drawbacks. Now less than six is a miss. With that partial success, you might say they find a secret switch, but as they flip it, a trap door opens up below their feet and they fall 10 feet to the basement, taking one harm. Harm is like a hunter's hit points or health. Each hunter can take up to seven harm. If they take more than seven, they die. Tell your players not to worry though. First aid, magic, and simple rest can heal them. After your players mark their harm, you describe that they're in a small basement room, more like a cellar that has been converted to an office and they're not alone. A zombie turns its head towards the player, moans, and begins moving towards them. Your player turns to you and says, I kick some ass. Now you know what that means. You know that kick some ass is a move. Sometimes players will simply say the move they want to make. As the keeper, make sure to remind them you have to make the move. This means in order to make a move, they have to describe their hunter doing it. That way, if their move doesn't go quite as they expected it, you know what they were trying to accomplish and can make a decision about how it went. After reminding them, they say, I pull out my sidearm, level it at the zombie, and shoot it in the brain. Now they roll for some kick some ass. They roll a 12. They deal the harm, list it next to the weapon, and it's enough to kill the zombie. Now that's just a quick example of how a scene may play out in your game. Most of the game will be you as the keeper setting up the scene and your players describing what they do and making the corresponding moves. Keep in mind that your players don't only have to do the moves in their playbook. They can try anything they'd like. The moves are more of a guide that gives the game some structure. The Roll20 character sheet has all the basic hunter moves on it for quick reference. Experience. At the end of the adventure and sometimes during, the hunters will gain experience. There are three times you'll be able to give your players experience. If a move tells you to, uh, if a player rolls and their total after adding their rating is six or less, at the very end of the adventure. When a player gains experience, they'll mark an experience box in their playbook. After they mark five boxes, they'll level up and choose an improvement from their playbook. Okay, now that your players are ready, you have a good idea of how the game flows. Let's make sure you as the keeper are ready to run the game. Now there are a ton of published mysteries to choose from, but we're gonna be using the free Dream Away the Time Starter Mystery for our example. If you're thinking of playing this mystery or maybe you are watching this video as a player and you know your keeper is gonna be playing this mystery, spoiler alert, check for links in the description below. Every mystery has four elements. Okay, this is like the mystery's elevator pitch. It doesn't have much detail to it, just enough to know what's going on. Here's the concept for Dream Away the Time. Ages ago, the village of Hanfast made a pledge to the Fae in exchange for prosperity. This year, they failed to offer tribute and the Fae is beginning to show its wrath. A hook. This is how your players will have been alerted to your mystery. In our example, one of the hooks is the village has been having one unusual weather event after another from a summer heat wave to a tornado. Threats. This includes the main opponents, NPCs, locations, and obstacles the hunters might encounter. Think of it as the puzzle pieces of the mystery, except some of these puzzle pieces are trying to kill your hunters. The biggest threat in Dream Away the Time is a monster called Bone Cruncher, who is a vicious goblin sent to get revenge on the little village. And finally, every mystery has a countdown. This is a six part clock that can move forward whenever you want to advance a story. Think of it like a ticking clock, keeping track of what the main threats would be if the hunters never showed up. In Dream Away the Time, the countdown starts with the bone cruncher just causing mischief and moves all the way to him killing everyone in the town. As you get more familiar with the game, you can use these elements as a framework to create your own mysteries. Now, there are some things that I didn't touch on in this video, like armor, luck, and advanced improvements, but they don't really hinder running the game. If you want to learn more about Monster of the Week, check out the adventure modules on Roll20. The free mystery Dream Away the Time has quick start handouts for both players and keepers that cover most everything you need to know about running and playing the game. Definitely worth a read if you're new to this style of game. Also, if you like this type of format where I quickly explain how to start playing a game, let me know in the comments below. If you have ideas for other games on Roll20 that you'd like to learn or you'd like me to explain, let me know. My name's Carlos Luna, and this was Learn How, Play Now.